Welcome, welcome, welcome to Tales from the Field. My name is Bradley Ball, and it is so good to have you with us. And I am Marco. Hey, Marco. How you doing? Great to have you here. Hey, Brad. I'm glad to be here. So what are we talking about today, buddy? Today we're talking about OpenAI. Oh, coming up, OpenAI. Good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. If this is your first time finding yourself over on Tales from the Field, make sure to give us a like and give us a subscribe. We have a community roundtable every Tuesday, and we also have new video content dropping all the time on our channel. All right, on to the fun stuff that you came here for. So this is the new OpenAI service on Azure. So you know, you've all heard of OpenAI, you've heard of ChatGPT. ChatGPT, well, uh, was launched by OpenAI in a free way. Anyone can go in and ask questions. Now, Azure is making the service available for you to, to create your own APIs, create your own models, fine tune your models, uh, just as you would in OpenAI. Uh, so a very quick, easy way to get started with this service is to go to the playground, have a couple models here that we could start experimenting with. One of them is the DaVinci model, which is the most complex model uh, that OpenAI has published so far. And what these models do is very simple. They just complete text. They just take some text as uh, a starting point and they try to guess what comes next. So say I- Is, this, is this where we do like a little question and answer? It could be. If we ask a question here, very likely the completion to that is gonna be an answer. So. I see everybody asking these really simple questions. If it's go, okay, I'd like to ask a fun question. But He-Man and the Masters of the Universe is not real. But right. let's say that He-Man and the Masters of the Universe were, which character would have the worst physical hygiene? All right, let's ask. Uh, so the way we use this model, it's just adding the text, just as you said, right? Uh, it's just right. Uh, E-Man, Masters of the Universe, not real. But if it was, Marco's already regretting coming on the show. <laughs> I am not. This is the, this is going to be interesting. Uh, but if it was, which character have the worst personal hygiene? Mm. Right? Uh, and I'm just going to go and click Generate. Uh, so this is going to try to complete this text here, uh, hopefully with an answer. Oh, we got something. We've got Skelter. Uh, he would have the worst personal hygiene. Uh, As so a villainous, sinister character. character, it's safe to assume Skeletor does not devote much time to per his own personal grooming habits. He's usually covered in dark robes and seems unwashed, giving off a putrid stint that would surely not be pleasant to be around. Wow. Okay. I mean, that's look, if I'm sitting around with buddies and we're, and we're having a conversation about this and this is the random thing that came up, that's not a bad answer or an argument to make, but how would I actually begin to utilize this in an IT environment, right? This is good. This is fun. Everybody's typing in these fun questions. This isn't realistic. Nobody's building an app for me to ask about Skeletor's personal hygiene. So how, how do we use this? Exactly. So uh, the thing about these models is that they're very fun in that they generate patterns that are, uh, that make sense to us. This is a, an answer that makes sense. So the whole way we use this is by manipulating the way we're in, inputting this information so that we get the information that we want. Uh, so right here, I'm not telling the uh, the model how it should answer me, right? I'm just asking a question. It's responding uh, in the way that it finds most likely to happen uh, in the real world. Uh, and by the real world, I mean the training data set that was used uh, to create this model. Let's say I wanted this uh, in sort of more of a Q&A style. Uh, I wanted to ask follow-up questions to it. How would I go about this? Uh, one way to do this would be to manipulate the answer, the question here, uh, mm. saying something like, user, user asks this question. Uh, and then I could have a, uh, say, chatbot to 
provide me with an answer. Just by altering this text, the formats uh, that the model is seeing here uh, is more of a Q&A style. So it's going to try to answer uh, in a way that makes sense. Uh, so you can see it's much more concise, even though it generated a different character here. Uh, it's still an answer that makes sense. Uh, but now I can ask follow-up questions. Uh, let's say I have uh, another question about Rotar. I'm not a, a huge fan of He-Man Masters of the Universe. Uh, so I could ask, for example, who is Rotar? Uh, you can see the model is going to pick up the format of this conversation. It's going to understand what kind of answer that I want. Uh, and it's going to give me an answer that makes sense for that context. So just by manipulating this way of inputting the information, uh, we could get different answers. Does that make sense so far? That makes a lot of sense. So if, if we take this in a different direction and we say we want to create a chat bot, maybe to go inside a Slack channel. So that way people can ask questions and they could potentially get answers. How, how do we utilize that? That is a great question. Uh, and we have something ready to show you. So the first thing about creating a, a chat box using Azure, the, the first stop you might make is Azure Box. Uh, so Azure Box is a service uh, in Azure where you can start to create your, your own chat box experiences. And that includes anything you can create with with an API, just like OpenAI. In uh, here, I've created a bot. It's a very simple bot that I've created with, uh, with Bot Composer Framework. Uh, so you can see I have a very small dialog. Uh, and what this dialog is doing is, in very simple terms, sending an HTTP request to uh, my OpenAI resource. Uh, so every time a user asks a question, I'm just taking that text packaging it in a way that makes sense for a chatbot experience. That's what we call prompt engineering in this realm. Uh, and I'm sending that request to OpenAI. Uh, and you can see that this right here uh, is the URL to my resource. Uh, then I'll, yeah, go ahead. If it's okay, I, I, I want to circle back on something real quick, because you just said something that I know is a big buzzword right now, prompt engineering. So what you've done is you've created this first action and and by doing this, you're going to be sending the text via the, to the API for us to be able to get the the model to produce a text response. And this action of the user typing something in, and then that going to the model, that producing a response to come back, that's prompt engineering. Exactly. Uh, so we know because we're engineers, we know how this mo this model should receive inputs. We know that we need to add some text before and after an input uh, so that it will provide the response that we expect it to. Uh, but an end user doesn't need to know that. They just have a question. They just want to know uh, who's the smelliest of the characters in HEMAT, right? Uh, so as we're designing this chatbot experience, we must do this prompt engineering uh, or manipulating the input so that the output is exactly what we expect. Uh, then from that response, we will extract exactly the bit of information that the user asked about uh, and send it back to them. Excellent. Very nice. Uh, so this is how it works. Uh, I've created this, uh, this bot in, in bot framework. I've published it. So it now shows up in my Azure portal. Uh, and I've published it to Slack. Uh, so with Azure bot, you get to publish to all these different channels uh, without having to know exactly how each of these APIs work. So I published it to Slack, uh, and you can see it's healthy here, so it's been connected successfully. Uh, and now every time that I send a message to this app, and this is my Slack workspace here, every time I send a message to, to it, uh, it's going to do that prompt engineering, send that message to OpenAI. Uh, OpenAI is going to respond, uh, and I can build that, uh, that response in Slack. Uh, in short, here's what it could look like. And let's use the same question uh, that we did before. So the same question about HEMAD here. Uh, let's see what the model says. So same answer about Skeletor. Uh, this is what the, the end user sees. But what's, what does OpenAI see? Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, here's what I did. Uh, instead of just sending the answer, 
uh, I've added uh, these two bits, so user and chatbot, uh, and that's how I got the response. Uh, and let's copy that response over here so that you can see how that integration works. So this is the whole context of my conversation so far. Uh, every time I send a new question, uh, for example, can you be more specific? There we go. Right. Perfect. There we go. Skeletor is uh, often depicted as having poor personal hygiene and rarely bathing. He is often seen with an unkempt beard and dirty clothes. His grim and impatient demeanor further indicates that he does not put much care into his personal appearance. Wow. This is pretty amazing. So we're still having fun with this, but from a realistic per perspective, let's say I had a channel with a chat bot like this and maybe I was building something in Azure. And I had a question, how do I create a uh, peering between two VNets? If I type something like that in, would that produce a response for me? Or is that something that we would need to train over in the prompt first? Well, as good engineers that we are, I would start by testing out. Okay. Uh, so let's see what the answer would look like uh, from this non fine tuned model, right? Uh, we should say something like, uh, what was the question again? How do I peer two VNets, two virtual networks in Azure? All right. So here's my question. Uh, you can see it gives a pretty... Let's say two peer two virtual networks in Azure. You can use Azure virtual network peering. You can use virtual network peering feature to establish direct low latency and high bandwidth network connectivity between two Azure networks. You can peer as many as hundreds of virtual networks within the same region. That's, I mean, look, the next thing we're going to do is we're probably going to go and we're going to look up a docs article that, that talks us how to do it. But if I have a question, that's a pretty solid answer that we just got. It is. And if you want the source, because we can't just trust anything AI throws at us. This is part of what we call responsible AI. We need to know what we can do with this information. Uh, so I love that. I love that you're bringing this up. Responsible AI. Talk to me. What is responsible AI? So responsible AI is a concept that comes with these types of models that do things for us, right? Uh, say a model uh, says if, whether a patient has cancer or not. See, a model gives us information on how to set up our virtual networks. Uh, in any of these decision-making models, uh, there's a stake. Uh, mm -hmm. Something is happening. The model is deciding uh, what happens, and if there's a uh, an unfortunate consequence to that action, someone needs to be liable. Uh, with AI, there's no longer a person on the other side who can be accountable for this. So we, as users of this technology, and as people designing with applications around them, uh, we need to be aware that this information right here that is being generated by this model could very well be wrong. Uh, will usually not be. We need to understand the consequences. Uh, so responsible AI uh, entails all of that, of us being careful uh, with the type of information we're getting uh, and the type of impact that the AI that the AI has in the world. There, there's a phrase that I like very often that I used to hear uh, when I was working with folks in the military, which was trust but verify. And that's it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I look yeah, at ahead. something like this and I go, it's great that it produced that answer. Maybe that helps me when I go over and I do a s internet search to be able to find documentation for this. And then I validate that it's correct, but I shouldn't just take this at, at face value because there needs to be some responsibility here in, in realizing that things can be wrong from time to time. I mean, as, as we've been playing with this, right, uh, we got the answer of Skeletor. We got the answer of Rotar. We got the answer of Skeletor. Again, nowhere did I hear Beastman. And I got to tell you, I always kind of figured Beastman would have the worst personal hygiene. Uh, right. So it's it's very interesting what it comes up with. So uh, this is good to know that when we're looking at this data, we also have to evaluate this data. And that's that's a very important thing that we have. Brad Smith has been talking about this for years. I remember they put together a book on this. 
um, years ago, I want to say back in 2016, 2017. But it's important that companies realize the um, importance of not only implementing this technology, but implementing it in a responsible fashion. Right. Uh, one thing that we could use to trust but verify this information uh, is by asking sources. Uh, we could just ask something like, can you provide source? Right. Uh, and very often, OpenAI models are going to have resources. Uh, so you can see right here, it's a document from the Microsoft documentation that goes into virtual network peering. Uh, I didn't this even, information. Yeah, you no, didn't even need to go to a search engine. You just, wow. I oh, that's awesome. You can just ask for proof, uh, and very often it's going to have it. Uh, of course, this information could be, uh, it could be old. Uh, this model, uh, Right here, it's been trained with information up to 2021, and it's offline, uh, meaning that it's not going to the internet to pick up new information until we retrain it. Uh, so this could be a link from 2021 uh, that still works uh, and has uh, the most up-to-date information. You can see it was updated just this month. Very nice. Uh, but that's how you uh, responsibly use this information, right? And, and this is how you can start to make uh, actual useful value not that checking out the uh, the hygiene of uh, fictional characters isn't but uh here's how you can start to derive value uh, out of this technology what do we talk about we covered a lot we talked about the azure open ai service we talked about the da vinci model we talked then about prompt engineering which led us over to the azure bot service which then led us to Slack integration for the bot that utilizes the DaVinci model. And then we discussed the hygiene of Skeletor and Rotor. <laughs> Apparently both of them very stinky. And, and then we had a great conversation about responsible AI because the thing to keep in mind is this is not fallible. Mar Marco, what are your thoughts? So we covered a lot of stuff uh, during this conversation and it honestly it was great to talk to you about this. We could see how a service that in essence is very simple, we're just, you know, sending text and getting text back has a lot of nuance to it. You know, this technology is very new. People are just starting to use it and we're starting to see what's hard and what's not uh, about the service. So. We can't really pretend like we've been doing this for 20 years. It's just out. There's a lot we need to discover and a lot that we can get creative about the service. But there's already so much that we could think about and discuss. Possible AI, prompt engineering, those are just a couple of topics that came up in conversation. But it goes so much further. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here with me today, Marco. And everybody out there, you know what to do. You want to keep this conversation going. Sound off in the comments. We want to hear from you. Check out our previous videos. Let, let us know. What do you want to hear? Would you like to have Marco back again to be able to talk about this some more? Personally, I'd love to have Marco back. Marco, thank you so much. Take care, sir. Have a great day. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Bryce. Flow, you grow, you show yourself a foundation. Stay away from all the shit that 